Hello, this is Joe Yuhan here talking to you guys today about the benefits of trekking pole use with running. And not just mountain running, but all running, including flat running, fast running, after you put the poles away. So as a little bit of background, before a couple years ago, I'd never used trekking poles. And once I finally did on some adventures in Colorado, yes, I found them useful on those rugged, loose, steep mountains way up high, but I also found and was intrigued by how much they reinforced good running mechanics after I put them away, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So there's three areas where trekking poles can really help us have good running form after we put them away. The first is posture. So posture is the most important component of running form because it sets the tone for everything. And so efficient running form is having a hip hinge, which is simply taking the hips and pelvis and setting it behind us. That backwards set hip pelvic position does a couple things. One, it puts our body into a forward momentum position, but it also positions our legs to push behind and thus generate forward momentum. What tends to happen with all runners, but especially ultra trail runners, is we lose that hip hinge. And we lose that hip hinge and maybe fatigue, but very often it is sort of protective, where if I am getting fatigued and I'm on technical terrain here, this is aggressive and kind of scary. And my brain thinks I'm gonna bash my head on the rock. So it's gonna to wanna to do this instead. But if we do that, we run into problems. We don't use our hip as well. We tend to overstride and stress things out. Having the poles almost automatically puts us into a hip hinge position. Because the poles are in front, it allows me to shift my center of mass, my body weight, over my hands, over the poles, and thus helping me keep my hips back. In fact, it's almost impossible to use poles at all and not be well hip hinged. Because if I'm here, how do I push with this pole? I can't get it behind me. Now I can run and bounce straight up and down, but if I try to pull, <coughs> I just simply can't do that. I have to have my hips back, and then once I do, I can effectively angle that pole behind. And so the hip hinge is what allows the pole to push behind, but also the leg. That's the major benefit. The other benefit posturally is the trunk. So we want hip hinge, but we want trunk neutral, meaning not too much rounding, not too much arching. And so again, having the pole as an assist helps us to find and maintain that happy medium neutral posture. Lastly, with posture, this is really huge, is on downhills. Again, we're very protective. We tend to kind of be here because we don't want to fall down. Poles can be used as sort of a forward assist that not only we can kind of use to break and get some forward stability, but a pole forward helps us keep that downward hip or backwards hip hinge. So you can reference my article that I wrote on foot problems in form where I talked about the importance of having hip hinge to prevent both blisters and toenail problems that tend to happen when we lose our hip hinge and we start kind of going down the hill like that. So again, poles forward, but back on that downhill keeps us in a position to use our hips well so that they can be enhanced stability, cushioning on that downhill descent. So, number two benefit is propulsion. Some of this is no brainer. This other component is a little bit more interesting. So the no brainer, everyone knows this, that a pole can be used as added propulsion. Two poles on the ground is like having two more legs. So I can, when I'm pushing behind me, I've got both a right leg and a left pole. It's wonderful. That's the huge benefit in mountain events to get that added propulsion. But how do these benefit us once we put them away? 
That has to do with our upper body. When we use poles and use them aggressively, the pole push behind is going to activate musculature around the shoulder blade. And that scapular musculature connects to a piece of connective tissue called the thoracodorsal fascia. And that runs in a diagonal from one shoulder blade to the opposite hip. And that's what we need for our most efficient, powerful running. A lot of runners lose that, especially ultra endurance runners, because maybe we're wearing a pack, maybe we're holding bottles, and we're just not getting a good enough shoulder blade driven arm swing to really engage that system where that muscular fascial sling is connecting and driving force from the arm into the leg. And so when we use our poles really well out there for a few hours, that we wake that system up. So when we put these away, now my brain has remembered how to have a scapular driven arm swing that I can take into my flat, fast, and pole free running. Wonderful, wonderful connection um, that we can reestablish that poles help us to do almost better than anything else. Related to that, a shoulder blade down on the same side helps a hip up. Now we tend to not necessarily do that while we're using these, but same thing, when we engage the shoulder blade, we're gonna enhance hip flexion, which is gonna help us for flat, fast running and our top end speed. Lastly, the third benefit of pulled use is in imbalance and injury monitoring and mitigation. And where pulls come into play for that is through proprioception. And proprioception is the body's way of monitoring position and movement in space. So when we don't have poles, it's surprisingly easy to do weird stuff. To either maybe shift a pelvis in one direction or to lean a little bit. And that can create a lot of imbalances with respect to what our legs do. So what the poles do when they're on the ground, that's extra sensation of what our body is doing through that contact into the ground. But what it also does is when you are using poles, you're almost creating a gate where your body is passing through this space created by the two poles. So it's a lot easier to feel, am I doing something weird? Am I shifting a hip from one side to the other? Because you're just gonna feel that diminished space between one hip and the other. That can be hugely helpful for frontal plane problems, but even transverse plane problems, which has to do with rotation. So again, you can kind of feel like how well, how well am I moving my arms and my trunk? And in doing so, is there equal rotation? That can be huge carryover once you put the poles away. We're basically training that symmetry so that when we're done with the poles and flat and fast running, we're running more efficiently. Then, if we do notice, like for me, for example, I have a couple different habits. I tend to have a little bit of a hip shift, but I also have diminished push off on my right hip. I can use the poles to actually mitigate that during a long run and to, to help then carry over into a pole free run. And so one of the strategies you can do with poles, you can do the alternating pole technique, which again, anytime you use a pole to push, you're gonna get enhanced pushing through that leg. But you can also do a double pole technique where if I wanna get a little more power out of my right hip, I can double pull and plan it so that I am pushing only when my right leg is behind my body. Push back with the right. So that, if I wanna really work on a technique of just getting more power out of my right hip, that double pull strategy is really great. Lastly, what's really intriguing for pole use is let's say you're in a flat run, but they do allow poles to be used. Um, but you're in the middle of this race and all of a sudden you sprain an ankle 
or you have a knee pain or something, you can use the poles as crutches. So on downhills, for example, you can double pole right leg, say if I hurt my right leg, double pole righty, double pole righty. Same thing, if I can barely push off this leg, I can double pole and basically use my poles as crutches. In conclusion, poles are a wonderful tool, but they don't need to be just for high alpine mountain races and adventures. Consider using poles as a way to enhance posture, enhance propulsion, enhance your efficiency and proprioception, and then kind of have them as a backup maybe in that long race where you maybe not wouldn't use them, but if something bad happens where you need to mitigate a stress area and injury, the poles are there as a tool. Best of luck.